Johnny, I don't know. Did you make any sports teams in school? Uh, yeah. Grade nine midget boys basketball. Right. And then Jamie Slaney told me I wasn't very good. I never tried out again. Right. So that was bullying when you was fine to do that. Right. And so, uh, <laughs> nobody stood up for me. <laughs> nobody had a buddy bench. No, a buddy bench, <laughs> a buddy bench. No, we had a dunce cap. Welcome to Bad Parents, a podcast about three bad parents who are trying to raise good kids. She's Shauna. Hello. He's Ryan. What's up? And I'm Johnny. A Tell It Like It Is podcast for parents to laugh, cry, and to make you feel better about your parenting. (laughs) All right. Welcome to Bad Parents season number two. Just a quick refresher. My name is Johnny Garbutt. I'm Shauna. I'm a very scruffy Ryan. I like him. Today. Nice. Ooh. Do neither one of you have last names or am I the only one with a last uh, name? I'm kind of like Seal or Cher. Yeah. Sure. Just kind of go by one. Yeah. And you're like... Cher or Seal. Perfect. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So this is where we sit around and talk about being bad parents and how to make our kids better than we were as kids. And so thank you so much for joining us. I have a question for you to kick it all off if you don't mind. Mm-hmm. of parents say they feel overwhelmed by the amount of this. What is it? What do parents feel overwhelmed by? 56%. Schedules. Okay. I'm going to say homework. It's last names. Just kidding. It is (laughs) uh, email from their kid's school. And it got me to thinking about if... Just email from your kid's school yeah, was oh. overwhelming. Yes. You'd take that amount of being overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. But it seems, Shauna, you have some new information in regards to what it's like to be a parent. The United States of America has just issued a public health crisis because they say parenting, modern day parenting is so stressful. It's a public health concern. That's huge. It just came out in the news this week. And it's so cathartic to know that we're not the only ones that feel this way. Does that mean I get hooked up with some Zoloft or depression medicine? Probably. I don't know what the answer is. Right now, they're just doing these studies and they're saying because of all the modern day, like the double income families, Mm, mm -hmm. uh, the technology, the kids on the technology, all this stuff that we're dealing with that we know every day is leading to really burned out parents. Does it make you feel better to know that somebody is saying that how you're feeling is okay instead of like, like, why am I the only one that feels like this? Am I the only person? But like now that actual people with degrees and things and being smart and going to university telling you that this is okay, makes it now okay to feel this way. It justifies it. There's comfort in numbers. And I'll say that there's a common theme. If you listen to season one of bad parents and it'll probably roll through season two as well. It's at how parenting is so different now from when we were children and just give you one example of something that we need to concern ourselves with that our parents didn't have to concern ourselves. And we talked about it on our radio show this morning, Q107 on your FM dial or any way you listen to radio is that when you had a school trip or Johnny, I don't know. Did you make any sports teams in school? Uh, yeah. Grade nine midget boys basketball. Right. And then Jamie Slaney told me I wasn't very good. I never tried out again. Right. So that was bullying when you was fine to do that. Right. And so uh, <laughs> nobody stood up for me. <laughs> nobody had a buddy bench. No, a buddy bench. <laughs> a buddy bench. No, we had a dunce cap. Uh, and so what it was, was if you made a sports team or if there was a field trip, a bus took you there. Simple as that. Uh-huh. And we were just talking earlier this morning that my son's got a volleyball tournament and he's got to be picked up at three and dropped off to another school and then picked up at seven. And so it's, is that the end of the world? No, but it's just one other thing that parents need to try to figure out, as you mentioned, especially if it's a double income, it's not easy to do these sort of things. No, it's, and we're dealing with the same thing. Volleyball, my son just made the team. And as much as you want to encourage them, it's like, you have to make every team I know, I because know. there's, there's games Two every week now, no busing. I, I wish my kids weren't like didn't take after me and just be so <laughs> athletic because it's inevitable they're going to make the team. So, so I, you know, I'm five foot seven, and in grade nine, I was probably five foot four, and I made the volleyball team. It's so yes, insane. weird. But you were the setter. I was the setter. You weren't the spiker. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> come on now. So, in regards to what you were talking about there, I got a really great text. And tell me if this resonates with anybody, okay? Okay. Teachers in schools are groomed to make the craziest shit seem completely normal. And you're the only one who thinks it's crazy to have to get a kid to school sports event for 3 p.m. Right. Because in any other world, you look at everybody else like, am I the crazy? Am am, am I the one that thinks this is crazy? Back to your report on people saying no. 
it's not crazy that you feel this way. Yeah. The whole world knows your ideas are crazy. The public system and the union who think that it's normal and the mentality to just get to summer because then it magically all goes away. Right. And all the problems that you're speaking of now, or, you know, the, at least up here in Canada, the unbelievable lack of bus drivers, nobody has the foresight to be like, hey, maybe we should deal with this. I don't know. In the summer when we do have a bit yeah. of downtime. Yeah. And then the problem is, is like, oh, so what's the problem with bus drivers? They don't get paid enough for what they go through, right? Okay. And there's a story recently in Southern Ontario where a, a members of a Catholic school board went to Italy, four of them costing, I believe it was $45,000 for travel, for food, and for accommodations. And they purchased about $100,000 worth of stuff for these a handful of Catholic schools. Yeah. So you say to yourself, okay, here's the frustration. Bus drivers, shh, there's money somewhere. Pay the bus drivers so then they don't quit the day before. Or or maybe bus drivers can take your kids to the school programs. Or maybe you don't get envelopes saying, hey, listen, can you help raise some money for a Halloween dance at the school? And sometimes when you talk to parent people who aren't parents, they're like, well, uh, so you have kids. You have kids. Why is it my responsibility to get them to places? You also pay taxes. Yes. And I haven't had a bus to get my kid to school. Forget intramurals mm -hmm. and in sports. My 16 year old has not had a bus and it's, it's already halfway through the, like almost halfway through the year, there is no bus to take him to and from school because the driver quit the week before school. And sometimes you think to yourself, like I'm thinking right now, are we just sounding like three kind of bitchy parents? But obviously not if people are saying it is a detriment to your health to raise children. Sure. So to answer your question, it is, it helps justify it that we're not, because sometimes you do think, why yeah. am I being so stressed out why am i complaining all the time our parents didn't well they didn't deal with this stuff. right sure and i also feel the old man was drunk by 5 p.m <laughs> i also feel like there's a graph that you could be like you know the sort of overall parental stress and one branch is school and the other mm -hmm. branch is social media and the other branch is mental health and the other branch is just like my kids won't eat vegetables like and all of these things wrapped together kind of like make you <laughs> crazy as a parent, ask yourself this if you're going back to what you mentioned about your parents. I don't mean your dad necessarily, Shauna, but could you imagine your dad in 1984 calling your mom saying, did Shauna go over her words today before the test? No, he's probably pouring a drink for his client and then they're going to hit the strip joint at dad, lunch. Exactly. My dad had take lunches mm -hmm. at the Rippers. While my mom was probably whatever she was doing, yoga maybe during the day because we were at school and that was the world of school and we had buses and we had stuff. Yeah, for sure. Definitely they had a life. I think one of the things that, you know, the, the kind of misconception is like in movies, you see these sort of tropes of different things in movies where there are really business people in the 80s that had direct phone lines to the bar that they were at so they could still conduct oh, yeah. business while at their watering hole? Or was that just like a cheers thing for me? Yeah. I, I feel like it might have been a thing. I think it did. I, I really, so. there's a part of me that goes to bed at night being like, I really <laughs> hope it was simpler back then where you could just call the bar and talk to my dad. Yeah. No, now you got to call the school to talk to the principal oh. or the teacher because your kid's freaking out. Yeah. It's hard right now. It's hard. It's, it is it is very difficult to be a parent when it comes to school. That is for certain. And yeah. I'll say this. I have three of them that don't like going to school. So it's even more of a challenge. Yeah. Just to get them there. It's a health crisis. We're in a crisis. Yeah. I need to drink. <laughs> Off what you were saying about us having this national sort of international parenting crisis, I decided to go to the one trusted source more than whatever university this study came from, the doctors, the psychologists. I went to Reddit because oh, you go yeah. to Reddit for <laughs> everything and they just like they'll make you feel better about yourself. OK, so we play a game on our morning show. It's called Rank It, mm. where I'm going to give you five different things. And you're going to blindly rank them one through five without knowing what is next. Okay. So I just typed into Reddit. What's the worst part of having a child? <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. There's only five? Well, mm -hmm. I, I only have five. You paired it We down. could do the top 76, but I just decided to do the five. Okay. okay. So I'll give you one. And um, who wants to play? Because it's, it's hard. You may have different ranks. Do you want to play and I'll just chime in? Yeah, sure. Okay. I'll play. So, Sean, I'll, so I'll tell you if you're right or wrong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's the worst part of having a child? Number one, or at least number one on my okay. list. Okay. So, rank this out of five worrying about them 
for the rest of your life. Uh, yeah. I can't believe anything would beat that, but I hate to put number one off the top, but that to me is the worst. I'm going to do number one, right? Right, Ryan? Number one, or should I save something for something worse? <sighs> Here's the thing. I'm just thinking It's never ending. I know, but I don't expect to live a long life. So mm. I'm mm. thinking to myself, that's only another maybe 10 years of worrying, <laughs> but yeah. it's still technically the rest of your life. Whether you live, I have the under on that, by the way, uh, whether you live another 10 or 20 years. Just an interesting side note. How am I going to die? Uh, let's see. Um, ticker. You are, ticker. You are on heart medication. And uh-huh. That's not a joke. Uh, and you refuse to take it for some reason. So I'm going to go. I'm going to take the Shauna and you're going to have a heart attack. Okay. We could rank that in another episode. Is Ryan going to die? <laughs> so heart attack. Number one. So you've just decided that out of the gate, I've already given you the number wow. one. What's the worst part of having a child? Worrying about them for the rest of your life. I never thought I could worry about something more than when my first child came home as a baby and you know when they sleep in, in, the, oh. in, in, the, in, the, in the bed mm, beside mm, you mm. And, and whatnot. I would have bet money that my child stopped breathing 75 oh. times in the night. Uh, and it's it's never stopped. Did you do then. the mirror? Ever do the mirror oh. under the nostrils? No, I just I just did the uh, I just did the the, the pat until they, oh. they made a noise. <laughs> I was a noise guy. I went in there and said, Are you asleep? <laughs> mm. And then, like, and I go, I creep in all quietly, and because my ankles sound like castanets, and one of my kids would just they, they'd be like, "Yo, Dad, I was sleeping. I, why did you just wake me up?" And I'd be like, "Wow, you're speaking pretty good considering you're three months old." It was awful. I will say, it still is Ryan. If you're new to the show, I have three of them. The first one, everyone I checked on less. Oh yeah, because it's just it's a waste of time. Yeah. But uh, it is a concern. And you're right. And like, I will say, we have all different kids at different ages. You worry about them for different reasons at different ages. I have a sick kid right now and another kid probably being a truant at school because mm-hmm. I got an absent re- alert. So, like, it's happening all the time, even sure. right now as we're working. So, I, I can't see anything beating worrying forever. So, number to, one. To Rye's point about um, checking on them less as, you know, they mm-hmm. grow younger or whatever. Like your youngest one is nine. You still have yet to check on him, right? I don't even know where he is. No, <laughs> In fact, What's, you could uh, you can get a hold of us and tell me what his name is. <laughs> Winner gets a Q107 t-shirt. Bad or parents. Gets him. That mug. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the worst part about having a child? They're always just there. On you, behind you, in front of you. Just a little speed bump impeding every task. I'm not the most efficient person that doesn't bother me i know it bothers my husband my husband likes to do things very efficiently he hates how long my kids take to get out of the car Mm -hmm. so i would say for me personally i'm gonna put that maybe around a four okay i'm okay with them being around i don't disagree and i would say that gets easier as they get older yeah because they're more into their own thing or you can have more adult conversations with them i think your age group like toddlers when you're like i just need a minute to do this like you say you're trying to fix something like your sink or something. And you're like, I, I love you. I just need a minute. I think as they get older, that gets easier. So That's, I think four yeah. is pretty good. Yeah. yeah. It's hard for me to say this, but every so often I can get out touched. Yeah. Oh yeah. Or I'm just, I, 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 please don't touch me anymore. Mm-mm. And I'm very physical. Like mm-hmm. I love hugs and stuff, mm-hmm. but that would be higher on my list. Do you like when your wife touches your no, no square? <laughs> Do you like that? <laughs> Do you say, oh, Hey, that on the list. just touch me there. It's my no, no square. <laughs> No, that's not on not on the list. Is either. lack of sex on that list? It's not. Uh, what about intimate relations whilst kids are in the room? It's not. Sorry, what, what, what what's happening at your house? What about the cat is in the room? Mm. No, it's not. Okay, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> what's the worst part of having a child? Being hung over on a Sunday morning, oh. catering to a three and a one year old. Preach. I gotta say that's number two for me, Shauna. I, I know yeah, you don't drink no. as much as me. Two, two, two. I remember my third one. I was dying, 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 shaking, like uh, holding him trying to, to lull him back to sleep whilst watching The Littlest Hobo. It was on at like five o'clock in the morning. And I'm thinking I would like, I would give up mm. any organ yeah. just to have both of us fall asleep. It is the hardest, the worst thing in the world is being hung over as a parent. What do you call it when you give up alcohol? It's not celibacy. That's, that's sobriety. That's right. Sobriety. Mm-hmm. I decided to go 100% sober the day that my first one was born. Because I don't want, I never want to be part of that scenario. Mm. Your wife went celibate. You mm. went so <laughs> Hey, man. She watches this. What's the worst part of having a child? Here's the fourth one you can choose from or rank it. Having to take care of a sick child when you're also sick. Oh, oh that's awful too. For shoot. me, that's the most challenging part so far. That's from Reddit. That's a freaking tough one. This right here is why I will always stay married. 
I would never, ever, ever oh, want a single yeah. parent, uh -huh. a kid sick. I right. just can't. You want to call it the man cold? You want to call it whatever you want? I'm not that guy. I did it in between marriages. I was a single mom for like a blink of an eye. Congrats. Uh, and I remember being at a hospital by oh. myself and I was like, this is, I, my heart bleeds for single parents right off the bat. Like I can't imagine doing this. Uh, I wish I had saved that spot for a little bit higher. So I know. we've only got three, three number and five. three, three and five. Yeah, three, I go three because three. I remember, I remember Whoa. the whole family was sick. Why well, everything kids were sick. And I remember one of them needed some fresh air. So I went to outside and pushed him in, um, pram. Mm -hmm. Sorry. That's the English coming <laughs> out. Pram. I was always pushing him in a pram and I swear we suffer from, from scurvy <laughs> and, uh, I wanted to die. You want to die. Again, that's when you look to the heavens and you're like, I'll do anything yeah. to, to, for something to change here. It's an awful feeling. How many laps of Big Ben did you do? <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're going to see the Houses of Parliament now, son. Okay, do it. Do the please, sir. Can I have some more? We can just be done with it. Please, sir. Please, sir. Can I have some more, there please? There we go. We're done. Please, daddy. What's the worst part can of you having- an orange, please, sir? Why did you even say anything? Because I just want it out. What's the worst part of having a child? And you eyes already blew through your top four, which is, this is top five. And I think this one here with the hair <laughs> is going to hurt her a little bit more than us. And this is watching them leave home. Oh, wow. I'm fine with her. Yeah, she's good. <laughs> I'm going to be fine. Would you like a tissue? You know, one thing that's caught me off guard is that my friends, because I, I have some friends in our group who've got kids a couple years older. So Jack is going to be 17. So he has friends whose older brothers, older sisters have gone off to university this past fall. I have cried for other families mm. and I didn't expect it. I've always been like, yay, empty nest, empty nest. There's somebody that we worked with whose daughter went off to university. And came in the next day, and you could tell was shaken, mm. very upset. Not stirred. <laughs> and this was like on a Tuesday. And then on Thursday, I said, hey, what's up for the weekend? And what was up for the weekend was a complete remodel of her daughter's <laughs> room. Oh, right. And I'm like, yes. I'm like how, how did you go from like crying at work about her God to like erasing memories. Right, right. I probably could believe it. But it's healthy, probably. It could be. I think I'm going to be shriny. I'm going to keep them as little baby shrines. Well, yeah. I, for myself, I mean, they would be the first Parkers to go to university. I mean, yeah. I guess technically we're more of a community college kind of family. Yeah. Uh, and I guess they could go away for well, that. Well, they could work at a university. Yeah, they could. <laughs> what are they, like Goodwill hunting? Yeah. <laughs> That's the only way they get in? Is being a freaking janitor? I got you. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, it'll be it'll be very weird. I can't even imagine it right now. And to be honest with you, with, with the stories you hear, aside from maybe university, if they just work with the mortgages, kids are staying home for a long time. So by the time they leave, you probably want them to leave. But that's why I like my answer for number one. Sure. Because the worrying encompasses all. All of that. Mm. All like my son's driving now. I could not Ugh. relax till he, I heard that garage door open on right. Saturday night. It was about t 10 o'clock and I was, I could breathe again. So to me, I like where I ranked everything. There you go. I also yeah. agree with you. What's the worst part of having a child? Number one, worrying about them for the rest of your life. I don't think you can go wrong. All right, here we go. Time to join the shallow end. If you're new to the show, uh, you'll know that I am an idiot. And I like to keep things in the shallow end. And you guys are talking about stats and university and a public health <laughs> alarm. Right. You know what I'm talking about? Uh. Heidi Klum and her hot butter. Now, do you think it's uh. weird or not? You want to play a little game of weird or not? Yeah. You might have seen it in the news. Heidi Klum and her daughter Lenny, who's 20 years old, have modeled some lingerie together <laughs> in a new campaign photo shoot. So it's 51 year old Dasi's good, Heidi Klum. And her daughter, Lenny, both in lingerie. Weird or not weird? I want to be cool and European and say it's fine, mm -hmm. but I could never imagine it with my own mom. Right. And no way. Uh-uh. No underwear with your parents. No. I would just <laughs> like to, on the record, yes. video and audio recording, that I don't want to wear lingerie with my mother in any way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. But your dad. I'd also not like to wear Speedos with my dad for any sort of photo shoot. Anything where, <laughs> besides my my lower arms and my lower legs, I don't want it shown with my parents. <laughs> like, in, in a way that I've seen these pictures. I'll take it one step further. I'm going to ask a question for you, Johnny. Man to man. And I can only ask you because uh, my parents are no longer with us. Would you even be comfortable? So we go over to Shauna's house. 
Mm-hmm. For some reason, your dad, Rick, is there. Hmm. We're having like a nice... before me, like he spent the night? No, you're all there hanging out. Okay. You have a nice frolic in the pool. You get out of the pool, uh-huh. and I don't know, you share some great news with your dad. Sure. And he <laughs> gives you a hug. You're both topless and wet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's weird, right? I'd, I would, I would, because I'm an overthinker, mm-hmm. I would think so much I would save the news for when we're all clothed. Because I yeah, know right. that that would, would happen. Like, I'm going to tell you this. Let's say there's a fire. Christmas morning mm-hmm. and he's decided to spend the night and it happens at 4.30 in the morning I'm there. and we all run outside in our underwear mm. and thank God we all survived and everything's okay. He's still just getting a fist bump. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. You're a prude. I think we're all prudes. I think the European way is the better way. Yes. I don't like that I'm uncomfortable with it. Like I change in the private change room at the gym. I'm very prudish. Oh, you're right. This seems very European. Now she's German, right? Yeah. I don't know if, where they still live out there, but like even like topless beaches, you would go with your family. Like yes. it's just a thing. We are way more prudy over here. I, Side note: Do you think your dad wears? Does he wear boxers or Y fronts? Uh, my father. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thanks for asking. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure. Last time that I saw my dad in his underwear, I was six, and I, at that time it was just straight up tidy. Whiteies, but right. they were black. It is a weird thing when <laughs> <laughs> a white waistband. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it, so it is weird waities. though. Eh? It is weird when your kids, like I'm sure, you know, as a, as a mother, as a father, you know, you're nude and you're nude in front of your kid, you know, when they're little or whatever, mm. and then it obviously gets to a certain age where you're like, it's just not comfortable anymore, right? Right. Whatever that age is, it is for each person. Right? Ours was extended. Like I'm more comfortable with nudity. <laughs> I I had baths with my son way too long. I brought it up once on the air and people were like, how old is your kid? I think he was four. But Eli weird? was 14. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Jack was 14 and he's shaving next to you. Hey, Ma. Oh, God. No, that's, it's, uh, I don't think that's abnormal. Well, it's just because we did attachment parenting. I did extended breastfeeding. I did a lot of stuff where they seemed younger maybe mm. um, than other kids because we were doing so much of that style of parenting. But yeah, I... But at this age now and doing, and the lingerie is different than walking around your house. Like it's a sexy photo shoot. They're sitting together in sexy underwear. Like there's one point they're sharing a stool. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, I think for me, um, and now thank goodness this is a video uh, podcast. So I really want this to sink in. (laughs) I used to sleep in the nude and I really, really enjoyed it. And (laughs) now that my daughter was born and my kids, I've had to put on clothes now while sleeping. Uh Uh-huh. And I don't like it. And I'm really going to hold it against them that I don't get to sleep the way daddy wants to because of you. Save and, that for the wedding speech, maybe. Yeah, I think I might because I really liked it. And uh, now when they're not around, like at <laughs> hotels or when I sleep over at somebody else's house, my kids aren't around, like then I'll sleep naked. And it's glorious. It's true. I knocked on his door once, like when we did an event. He mm-hmm. was already like, he's just naked he all the time. Down. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if you're listening and, and you say you do know us and you do know that Ryan Parksy, you love to hang in the shallow end. Of course, you're saying to yourself, Ryan, how are you talking about Heidi Klum and her daughter, Lenny, lingerie together, and you're not talking about the old sportsman's double? So if you're not familiar, sportsman's double is something very, very rare. Very, I don't know anyone that's accomplished a sportsman's double, and it's where you sleep with the mother and the daughter. <laughs> it doesn't even necessarily have to be the same night, but it's a very rare accomplishment. Oh so I said to God. myself, sportsman what double? sportsman's double? <laughs> Google it. And so I thought to myself, let me look up. Is there any other potential sportsman's doubles out there oh my God. when we're talking about celebrities? Go ahead. I'd just like to say that I feel like a, the sportsman double is what people, if you need to have a massive flex in mm. front of your friends, yes. you'll throw out a sportsman double. Yep. I feel like a sportsman double is like a unicorn. It just doesn't exist. Yeah. I don't think that any mother daughter combo would be like, this is awesome. No. I can't wait to sleep together with you and do things. In fact, I'm uncomfortable talking about it. Okay, then how about, because I've seen it in some adult films, would you give me (laughs) stepmother and daughter? (laughs) Right? What's that (laughs) called? Uh... Is it still a sportsman's double? Yeah, I'll give you a sportsman's double, a step sportsman's double. Oh, okay. All right. Hey, your father's out of town. Okay. It's like pickleball to tennis. Right. Exactly right. He's not going to be home for a while. Ooh. You're bigger than your dad. You oh, know, okay. you know. All right, get to your oh, list. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, okay, oh so here's gosh. a list of... I don't know, tell me what you think. I don't know. I'm not that impressed. I thought I'd see. I'd find better Hollywood mother-daughter combinations. Dakota Johnson and Melanie Griffith. Well, that's a good one. You're interested in yeah, that? Yeah, uh-huh. I'm not. Mariska Hargitay and Jane Mansfield. Oh, these are great. You know Jane Mansfield. Do you know the story behind her? 
with the whole bar on on if next time you're driving around a truck if you see the there's a truck and you see like a like a bar underneath like where the door shuts that's called a mansfield bar because when she got in a bad accident right she died and she, she went did the old the, headless horseman she went under the truck i didn't know that it's called a mansfield bar because of her it's i'm like 99 percent sure that's true it's like a cow catcher for your head uh eva amori and susan sarandon I don't even know who the first name is. I think she's done a few things. She's the daughter. Yeah, yeah she kind of looks like a... Can I just rewind for a second? Yeah. Marissa Hargitay is Jane Mansfield's daughter? Correct. You didn't and know I, that? No, I had no clue. I believe she was in the car when that happened, too. Yikesies. Baby. Oh, no, I didn't know that. Enjoy sleeping. Hargitay. I love saying Marissa Hargitay's I name. Know, it's so fun. Kate Hudson, Goldie Hawn. That would be my yeah, number man. one. That's your number one? Yeah. Absolutely. So, so much giggling. Right, right. right. Very, it's a happy one. Who's, uh, who's uh, Kate Hudson's brother? All of her. Yeah, I like him. I like him a lot too. I think he's a funny guy. <laughs> well, well, no, I'm just saying. Like the next morning, like at, uh, for breakfast, he'd be there, right? You're picking your sports people based on which brothers yeah. at Pancake Breakfast. Yeah, <laughs> that's an interesting. I like so him a angle. lot. You saunter down. You're yep. like, hey, I just banged your mom and sister. <laughs> yeah, let's eat some pancakes. Yeah, I think that's going to be a real enjoyable morning. It's funny your name's Oliver because I was all over your <laughs> oh mother and sister. God. Yeah, God, that is a weird that's, angle. But to just, take. just Very a, weird. you want to talk about a cherry on top. <laughs> Oliver Hudson. Oh my God. What? <laughs> That's so weird. I don't care. All right. I can I can do a little political here for this one. This is my favorite if I had to. Okay. <laughs> Remember Sarah Palin? <laughs> oh yeah. Her daughter. Bristol. You know. Uh, she yeah, I give it to you. Yeah, I give uh, it to them. <laughs> Sportsman's double. The Palin's going all political. You know what I'm saying? Well, there we go. There's an episode. Sorry, of- they don't have a cool brother, Johnny. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. If only their brother was John Cena, then Johnny, <laughs> Johnny would sleep with them. Well, there's episode one yes. of season two wow. of the Bad Parents Podcast. If you have any comments, and I'm sure you do, please send them in. <laughs> Email us at badparents at curiouscast.ca <laughs> from our producer, Roz. Thank you so much. Roz, Mike, thank you for uh, putting it all together. And until next time, I'm John Garbett. I'm Shauna. I'm Ryan. Can you throw in a last name, please? Nope. This Parker. And this has been Bad Parents.